with the uncertainty expected to persist on COVID-19 front some more period. We were talking of a third wave, Delta variant, so many things. But I am sure the services that are being provided by our medical system and the assistance given by the government will be able to face it effectively. But we, the citizens of India, I call upon the citizens, if not the duty of the government, center or state, or the doctors and scientists alone, it is our duty, the duty of citizens, to follow the advice, medical advice, and also administrative advice, given by the government from time to time. Personal agent. If the responsible of everything, washing your hands, washing your feet, whenever you go, and I will do something and come back. Second, is wearing a mask in public places and interacting with others. Third, one is taking to vaccinate. Vaccine. We are taking vaccine for our care. It is not for somebody. Certain apprehensions were created in sharing, unfortunately, for some people. Without any meaning. Now I am happy that the country is moving forward and people are coming forward. The governments also are accelerating the process of vaccination. I appeal to all citizens take this as a responsibility, as a Pavitra Kartavya of every individual and get vaccinated at the earliest for your sake, for the sake of others, and for the sake of the nation. This is an important duty trust upon us. And we also should observe many, many advices are given by Dr. Kutasiriti, many achievements of this day. I would like to tell you the people of the country only two things. One, with all the technology, with all the new innovation, services provided by our medical fraternity, they will succeed with you, you also, people also, we also, you means all of us follow two important things in society, in country. One, physical fitness. Everybody has to take care of their body. Fitness of the body provides you fitness of mind also. If you are physically fit, you will be better than that. To take care of our physical fitness, do some physical activity. Life should not be mechanical. We should not lead a sedentary life. So I call upon the youngsters to be active partners in this national development by attaining physical fitness. Whatever way, yoga, good namaskara, walking, or going to a gym, do some physical activity every day. The pious duty. Second is good habits. You may be surprised the Vice President of India is talking about good habits. Good habits are vital. We are hearing about the Dr. Rutabed, you have explained about the prevalence of non communicable diseases. They are increasing. In India, we are facing that challenge. I don't want to get into details and give you all the figures. We have to take care of our good habits. Hygiene, food, Indian food, food is, which is based on season and reason. Which food one has to eat in what season? This our forefathers living for thousands of years. Their experience, they have passed on it to us. And we fortunate to have the best food in the world. So should children, because of the restaurantization, cinema, TV, net, and all, some of them are taking to check the food. Relieve it. Relieve it. Food has to be cooked proper. And if you eat cooked food, not the junk food, you will be healthy. Because a healthy nation can become a wealthy nation, not vice versa. This has to be understood by one and all. 
This is one of the lessons. The teacher, COVID is a teacher. It has taught us many lessons. We should all heed to the advice the teacher follows. And even I go to the extent of saying that people should also try to live in with the sun, not your sun, of course, you have to live with your sun, take care of the sun. Yes, Nature has been very kind to us. And the air, air circulation is very important for a healthy life. This I am speaking out of my experience. Look at the rural people, why they are less affected. The hard work, the good habits, but also the living conditions. We are all slowly up living in a closed, closed. Everything is closed, including mind. Open up. Be friendly with the nature. Nature, culture, together for better future. We should be the watchword. But all of us should really follow this in order to make our country a strong and stable nation. My dear friends, the economy has progressed because of various factors, the lockdown, which was an SCD. But the economy is now recouping. Various reports have indicated a strong rebound in the manufacturing and construction sector. But the service sector was slightly sagging. The agriculture sector has been a consistent performer even during the darkest days of the pandemic, thanks to the farm. Agriculture has grown by 6.3%. The only sector whose pharma is there, agriculture, it has performed very well in spite of adverse conditions. By talking with growth of 4.5% in the first quarter, as well as the 3.5% during the earlier, the agriculture sector is going again the desire. Four sectors like fertilizer, cement, steel, coal, and refinery products have also shown positive growth. The hospitality sector is weak. The travel, the tourism, they are all picking up. We are now stand oil on the cusp of economic transition. But all indicators point to the long term phase of growth and recovery in the coming months. Based on different markets, the Reserve Bank of India has retained the growth projection of 9.5% for 2020, 2021, and 2022. With the easing of various restrictions by the states and failed reopening of the economy, consumer confidence has recovered, and market sentiment too has shown a positive trend. The lessons learned during the past 17, 18 months. We are better equipped to deal with the pandemic now. I'm sure everyone from small business and to big business houses are keen to see their activities return to the pre pandemic level. All of us need to work in that direction. Driven by strong macroeconomic fundamentals, forward looking reforms, including GST, opening up the PIs. Strengthening of infrastructure and improving the ease of doing business. The Indian economy has the potential to reach US dollar 5 trillion mark in the coming years. The Prime Minister given a three line mantra reform, perform, and transform. Transformation of the nation. Ease of doing business. Business is in the interest of the nation. Some people, they We'll try to talk about business or meeting businessmen. They are also doing a great job. Business for the sake of the nation. And business improves the economy. Economy improves the lives of the people. And so we have to give respect to the business. And business can also follow ethics and standards. Chambers of commerce, they must have all the code of conduct for their members to see that code of conduct is implemented, warranted at all levels, 
ethics, morals, which have been part of our Indian culture, should again be restored with all of us and see to it that we run business in a healthy manner. To take care of healthy mind, a healthy nation. Listen. Choksi episode. Vijay Madhaya episode. These should not be allowed to occur again. It is the duty of the business cabinet. It is the duty of the chairs to take care to see that their members follow ethics and maintain standards. And then be customer friendly. The government has to be business friendly. And the business community has to be customer friendly. Maintain quality, high standard that will automatically take care of the economy. I'm happy because of various initiatives taken by the center and state government. The continues to atmosphere for foreign investment. The fiscal year 2021, 20, 20, the total FDI inflows to date US dollar 81.72 billion which is a 10-year-on-year -year increase. India is expected to attract FDI of US dollars 120 to 160 billion per year by 2025, according to CAA and Ernest and Eng report. We are all promoting public-private partnership in different sectors, including infrastructure, health, and education, is vital to propel economic growth. The private sector plays an important role. We are seeing the private sector playing an important role in the health sector. We are today presenting a totality. When it is with a pioneer in taking the health care to the remotest corners of the country. But go on further. And the effort should be made that we should not only reach the people, but the treatment should be within the reach of the people. Reach the people make the treatment within the reach of the people. It should not be confined to certain sections or certain cities. It must be further expanded. This public private partnership going up to the Tahsil level and Mandal level, you are sharing his experience of taking care of his own Mandal, Taragota Mandal. Everybody should think in terms of taking care of their area. Back to society. You must give back something to society. Society has given you so much. That's why we were able to reach this position. So we must give back something to society. And this medical facilities should be made available. Governments, of course, have to give more and more budget allocation to the health sector. But the private sector also should play an important role to promote infrastructure, health infrastructure in the rural areas. More and more medical colleges should come and government hospitals should arrange with private management to start medical colleges. And because of our population, we need more doctors, more nurses, more technicians. We have seen the demand for technicians also increasing day by day with the new investments of all. So we have to train this medical not only on the doctor's side, but also on the technical side, it is also equally important. So I stress upon that we must move on on this public private partnership. My dear sisters and brothers, India is blessed with a huge population of educated, talented youth and a vast pool of scientific manpower. Technological and scientific innovations will play a key role in driving the economy. There has to be a greater focus on creating the right ecosystem for innovation to thrive by enhancing investments in R&D. In this context, the public sector and the private entities need to join hands and bodies like Hindustan Chamber of Commerce must play a proactive role in facilitating such steps. Tamil Nadu is an attractive place for investments. It's a stable and investor-friendly government. The earlier government, the present government, they're all moving in the direction of happy about it. Good connectivity and infrastructure. 
talented and skilled and hard working people from an odd process. I compliment, I seen yesterday, IIT Madras has become the best ranking Indian Institute for the third year, third time in a row in the NIRF ranking. There is talent here in this land. Hard work, discipline, talent, innovation, they are not there. The governments also should encourage them. And this land has got a rich cultural heritage with a boring past. The carbon dating of some of the excavations have thrown fresh light on the ancient ancientness of a Tamiramakadi civilization, revealing that it was 3,200 years old. We can also see the influence of Tamil Indian culture. The Tangkur Wat temple in Kambodi, 12th century. 12th century. By our Indians. So I endorse the view of the Chief Minister, Hiru Minkis Talin, that the Indian subcontinent's history must be rewritten. History must be rewritten. In fact, it has to be rewritten with an Indian perspective. Unfortunately, because of the Korean rule and the Korean mindset, mindset, our history books, unfortunately, did not cover the Indian side of performance and the civilization. The advancement that has been made much before other countries by Indians that has not been adequately covered. Our national heroes, freedom fighters, their life, their sacrifices were not given adequate focus. We were taught a history about the greatness of Robert Wright, greatness of Alexander, greatness of those people who came and invaded India. But adequate focus should be given on. Our civilization, our culture, our heritage, our values, our languages, Tamil is one of the most ancient languages. Or other Indian languages. We must promote Indian languages. That's why I always say, be proud to speak in mother tongue. Mother tongue is like your eyesight. Other languages are like your spectacles. If you have eyesight, spectacles will work. If you don't have eyesight, even if you wear a horn, you want to put eye again. This has to be understood, and we must press on education in mother tongue. I am not against English or any foreign language. Learn as many languages as possible, but first, be proficient, if she is in your mother tongue. The children should be taught in mother tongue, in shape. Then, encourage to read other languages. The or in the countries who come to India and I meet them as vice president of a constitutional responsibility. I'm surprised that except the UK and America, no other head of the state speaks in English. They speak in their mother tongue. I asked Mr. Foster, I raised Mr. Foster, whether these people are not familiar with English. He said, they know English, but they will not speak English because they feel proud to speak in their mother tongue. This has to be understood. There is unnecessarily a false notion about the rights of the children, which has been created. That unless you go to convent and you are educated that way, you will not come up in life. And give you live examples. The president of India never went to convent. He studied in mother tongue, became the president of India. See, I'm not true. The vice president, myself, I studied in a village school, Vidhi Badi. That could reach this level. And then the Prime Minister of India, Narendra Modi, is now one of the most popular personality across the group, as what the reports are saying. He never went to Congress. He studied in his mother side. And the present Chief Justice of India, Mr. Ramana, he also recently said proudly that he studied in his mother tongue. We have the examples of the term. Why am I giving examples? He said to motivate the younger generation. Do first study in their mother tongue. Be creative. Original ideas, creative ideas will come out of our mind. If you study initially in your mother tongue, you'll be able to express better, write better, and then move on to other languages. My dear friends, the Chamber of Commerce 